Hi guys, today we're going to do simple collision detection um, as promised in the Pong video. Um, I, told, I told you that we're, we're cheating with um, collision detection because we knew where object would go and we used values um, like 10 or 5 which are um, many values divisible by so um, helped a lot. And today we're going to do um, normal collision detection for 2D games, so bounding box um, kind of things. Um, first of all, as always, we're going to go to Tutorials Project, create a um, new package. Tutorial, and that's 11. Then we're going to do, uh, yeah, we're going to copy um, our template file. So that's the thing that um, you should have right now. Um, yeah, first of all, I'll copy the uh, imports just to make it easier. And then we'll go uh, one method by uh, method by method, basically. So yeah, let's submit that. Um, first of all, we're going to create our entity or game object. So um, anything that uh, will be used as a base class for your game object in the game. <clears throat> I call it entity. Uh, an entity has an XY coordinate, so um, in 2D space, and width and height, and also we specify the color just to um, distinguish between the two elements. So we're going to have two objects on the screen and we'll do a simple collision detection on them. Uh, we'll create two um, fields, width and height, to store um, W and H, so width and height values. We extend parent as opposed to extending a node, because uh, with parents you have this ability to create more than one node and store them. So if you want to have a slightly advanced geometry or um, better looking image, for example, so you can um, have an image and then do um, add something else onto it. Um, we set translate x and y, so basically translate means move along the axes, um, and we're moving um, along the x-axis, x units, and then y um, along the y-axis. Now we set width and height. We create our rectangle, so this is going to be our sort of geometry. Um, rectangle with width and height, set fill, so this is color. We set color C, um, the one that we pass to our rectangle, and finally we add rectangle to the list of our children um, of the parent. So entity extending parent also extends all the methods the parent class has. Um, yeah, now we'll create the things. So um, info is going to be the text where we display whether two objects are colliding or not. We create an instance of entity, a player, an enemy. We're going to set the root size to um, 1000, 2008, and 720. Then we'll move our text 50 units um, along the x-axis and 50 units along the y-axis. Finally, we create our um, entities. So that's x, y with height. Um, I'm using so I'm using kind of square for enemy and a rectangle for player. So you can see that bounding boxes don't have to be um, actual boxes; they can be rectangles as well. So color green, color red to distinguish between them. Finally, we add everything to the root node so we can um, so JavaFX can display it. Um, now we go back to our um, scene and handle some key inputs. Um, you've seen that previously, I believe. So um, setting key pressed, um, lambda event. If code is W, then move up, basically. I'm using 7 to show you that we can do, uh, we can deal with collision detection even with um, 
weird numbers, so we're not divisible um, uh, by anything. Uh, get code, so S, that's moves down. Um, yeah, A, move left, and D, move right. Now, as you can see, there are two ways of doing that. So, collision detection, auto, and manual. Auto would be using um, Java FX methods. And I'm aware that some of you might not use um, Java FX library. So, uh, we'll do manual as well. So track collision auto, uh, we take two entities. Um, as you can see, we don't really care what entities are. We simply uh, get bounds in parent. So this is basically, uh, it returns bounding box of this entity in parent. And because they all um, share the parent, so the root node, um, player and enemy, they will return the bounds in the same sort of uh, coordinate space which is very important because you might be returning if they have different root nodes then they might be returning bounds, bounding boxes from different coordinate spaces and then your collision detection will break so if bounding box of A um, intersects or collides with B then set text collision else um, set nothing so I'm going to do um, this first um, the automatic one so, yeah, if we go back here, um, player, so this is the player, color green, this is the enemy, color, color red. The text is somewhere here, it's, it, it's displaying nothing currently, so if we move it slightly, um, the player, and we're closer to the um, enemy. As you can see, it says collision, and basically it will work. So it works fine. Now, if you're not using JavaFX, then you'll have to do uh, manual collision detection or whatever library you're using. Um, many uh, game engines and um, physics engines will have their own different library they use for collision detection. But the very sort of simple, I think it's probably the simplest one, um, doing manual collision detection using bounding boxes. So the idea of bounding box is basically a, a box or a rectangle that wraps around your object and as tightly as possible. And because we have um, rectangle as our geometry, which means that our bounding box will be exactly the same as the geometry itself. And in order to check whether two boxes collide, we um, get minimum maximum values of each box. So minimum x is the um, left side or the um, lesser value of the two values because a box will have like um, two boundaries to the left and to the right um, in the x axis. So minimum x is get translate x. This is the left part max x is minimum x plus the width of your um, box or of the entity uh, in our case same thing with minimum and maximum y values and again we do it exactly the same for entity b which is um, our next entity and we just name it um, 2 and if you want to do it uh, multiple times you'll probably need to isolate this in some kind of so this part in some kind of method that returns a billion and say um, I know is colliding and it takes two entity objects and returns whether they collide or not so billion value can control that and the actual uh, check is basically this we check if maximum x of um, object 1 is greater or equal to than minimum x of object 2 and minimum x is less or equal to the maximum x of object 2 and same goes with the y values and again um, I think I put it to the wrong place yeah so again info sets x collision same thing if collides then um, set collision if not set sets nothing
and we're now gonna run manual so I've commented out the also part and as you can see it works exactly the same because um, this auto which calls intersects underneath basically is doing this exactly the same check except um, there's probably Z axis as well because JavaFX works with uh, 3D objects as well as 2D objects so collision detection um, works um, and it will work for um, these kind of movements which are slow-ish and if you have like uh, one of the cases it won't work is when you have a small object, say a bullet, and it moves at very high speeds or velocity, depending on how you define those things. So just be aware of that, that it won't work at this um, particular case. Um, there are ways of sort of dealing with that, like uh, ray tracing or um, what else, tunneling. But these are a bit more complicated methods and we won't be covering them, well at least at this stage. Um, yeah, and I'm also planning to do a um, some kind of platformer um, series, so platformer based or project based series. So when you have several tutorials on the same thing, uh, in order to create a larger project. So um, if you have any questions or suggestions, just um, leave comments um, in the section below. And I think that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.